So question six on OCR gateway module P5. This is in the physics GCSE and it is also in the further additional science GCSE. This question is about satellites. Look at the diagram. So this satellite, you should recognize this is one of the types of orbit you need to know about. This is called a low polar orbit. A low polar orbit orbits around the poles of the Earth, so the North Pole is up here and the South Pole is down there, and you can see that the satellite is going around the two poles. Earth itself is spinning around in this direction, so low polar orbits are very useful for a number of things where the satellite needs to get a whole picture of the Earth and where the satellite needs to be able to generate that picture of the Earth quite quickly. So as it's polar means it covers and it will uh, be above every point of the Earth during, the, during its orbit and as it's low it will be quite a fast orbit so the closer it is to Earth the more rapidly it will go around Earth. This satellite is used for weather forecasting Explain why the orbit of this satellite makes it suitable for imaging the Earth. So think about the two things I've just said. It's a two mark, oh no, sorry, pardon me, it's a three mark question. So pause the video here and have a go. Well, the, the two uh, features of that type of orbit are that it will cover the whole of the Earth's surface. Excuse me, it should be a capital E, it's planet Earth. Okay, and because it is a um, low orbit, it means it does this in a, a short amount of time. It's got what we call a short orbital period. Orbital period means the period of time which it orbits the Earth. So period refers to time. Uh, and this is good, therefore, because it can, it can see weather throughout the entire world and it can see them changing over time. So it can um, monitor changing weather patterns. Move on to the next part. So another type of satellite is a geostationary satellite. So we've got the polar orbit in the previous question and geostationary satellite uh, is the second type of orbit. Why do geostationary satellites have higher orbits than satellites used for imaging the Earth? Think about what we talked about that low polar orbit. Why does a geostationary satellite have to be higher up than that? Um, just let me help you understand, if you don't already, the word geostationary, hopefully you know what stationary means, means not moving, and geo refers to Earth. So it means it's stationary above the Earth. And this type of satellite is really useful for things like communication because uh, the satellite dish on Earth that's trying to communicate with the satellite always is pointed at the same point in the sky. And they're always going to find the satellite there. So how Sky TV works, Sky satellite dishes, are communicating with geostationary satellites. So why do they have higher orbits then? Pause the video, think about the previous question and have a little go. Okay, it's about the orbital period. Okay, so they need a longer orbital period. Okay. 
Okay, now you don't actually need this data um, for the answer. Okay, but it's interesting if you think about it. It's the same point above Earth at all times. Earth takes 24 hours to rotate, so the orbital period needs to be 24 hours. The higher it up, it is up, the longer the orbital period will be. Part C then. Explain what happens to the gravitational force when the distance between a satellite and the Earth doubles. Well, immediately you're going to think that's pretty simple. The distance has increased, so the force is going to decrease. And if the distance doubles, the force is going to half. Well, no. Actually, because gravity is spreading out in all directions around like a sphere, when the distance doubles, the, gr the gravitational force will decrease by much more than that. So I'm going to give you a moment to try and remember how to work that out. You need to give an actual factor of how much it decreases here. Um, and it's not that it decreases by half or decreases by a factor of two. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, well actually, the gravita what we say is the gravitational force is actually proportional to the inverse square of the distance. Now, I don't worry too much about understanding the algebra, but what that means is if we increase our, the distance by 2, then we actually decrease the force by 2 squared. So it, 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 the force decreases by a factor of 4. OK? Explain why the speed of a comet changes as it approaches the sun. Now, it's part, of, part C again. So it's talking about the same idea, how the force changes with distance. So think about that, as it gets closer to the sun, how is the force going to change, and therefore how is the speed going to change? Okay, I'll give you a moment to have a go. Remember, it's a two marker. So your first part is for realising, your first mark is for realising that the force is greater as it is closer to the sun. Okay, now a higher force means a higher acceleration, so you could say a higher force means a higher speed closer to the sun. Okay, it will actually increase in speed as it approaches the sun. It will accelerate. Higher force, higher acceleration. Okay, I hope that helps. Let's go on to the next question.